Hello everyone and welcome back to our virtual Mishnah Berurah share. We're holding Mishnah Berurah Chelik Aleph and we will be learning today Mir Sashem Daf Pei Gimel Amid Aleph. We are continuing to learn Hilchay Sperchay Sashakar. We've been learning the halachas of who is worthy of becoming, of being appointed as a Shleach Tzibur and we will continue on that theme today. We're here in Simen Nun Gimel and we pick up today on the very bottom of Pei Beis Amid Beis with Simen Nun Gimel Sif Tez Zayin. Yesterday, we learned in Sif Tefs Vav, the Mechaber told us a halacha, that if somebody is the Shleach Tzibur Kavua, if somebody is the permanent Shleach Tzibur, so it's his job, he's the everyday Shleach Tzibur, or the every Shabbos Shleach Tzibur, he doesn't have to wait for a Gabbai to invite him to go up to the Amud. The Amud is his. He's the Shleach Tzibur Kavua, so he doesn't have to wait. He doesn't have to wait to be asked anything. He is entitled to walk up to the Amud and begin davening right away. And Adarabba, Hibadavka should not wait. And like the Mishnah Brewer, uh, did the Mishnah Brewer say it? No, the Mishnah Brewer didn't say it. But he shouldn't wait because why is he creating a Terchet Tzibura? Everybody knows it's his job to daven for the Amid. He should go straight up to the Amid and he should daven. Now we see in Sif Tezayin that that is not true of somebody who is not the Shleach Tzibur Kavua. Says the Mechaber. If somebody is not the permanent appointed Shleach Tzibur, not only can he not go up to the Amid on his own, but he has to give a little bit of a refusal before he goes to the Amid, but, but he shouldn't protest too much. So, what the Mechaber is saying is, if the Gabbai comes over and the Gabbai asks you to daven for the Amid, so the Gabbai is being Mechabed you, right? He's honoring you, so to speak, to take the role of being the Shliat Tzibur. Now, we've seen in this whole simon how high the bar is to truly be worthy of being the Shliat Tzibur. So if the Gabbai comes over and he asks you to be the Shliat Tzibur, really the Gabbai is paying you a huge compliment. Now, for somebody to say, oh, sure, me, go, yeah, yeah, right, I'm, here I go. In a way, he's being a little bit of a Balgaiva, right? He said, yeah, I'm absolutely worthy of the job, here I go. So says the Bechaber, no, that's not the right thing to do. And this is brought down from the Gemara, Lam, Brachas, Lam, Adalad, Amad Aleph. It's proper to protest a little bit before you go up. But the Bechaber says, but don't protest too much. And now the Bechaber uh, describes what you should do. Elapam Rishayna, the first time the Gabbai asks you to daven, misarev. You should refuse. You should protest. No. Pam Shnia. Then when the Gabbai says to you a second time, come on, maybe daven for us for the Amit. Mechin Atzmai, he should start to prepare himself. Kemosha Reitzalamid, as if he's getting ready to start up, to stand up. So the Gabbai comes over and says, maybe you'll daven for the Amit. No, it's okay. Come on, really. Maybe you'll come be Mechabed as daven for the Amit. You know, like, start getting ready. And when the Gabbai, when the Gabbai asks for the third time, you know, the Gabbai says, come on, please. You know, then Yamoid, then you should stand up. But let's say the one who came to ask him to daven for the Amit is not just a Gabbai, but he's an Adam Godoil. Maybe the Rav came and asked him to daven for the Amit. Enoi Misarev like Klal. Then he should not protest at all. Rather, he should immediately go and go to the Amit. Says in the Mishtabura, Ois Katan Mem Dalad. Lissarev. He should refuse. Shleach Tzibur. Shalai Ratzali Ois Oid Shleach Tzibur. Let's say you have a Shleach Tzibur Kavua. And... He wants to retire. He doesn't want to be the, the Shlach Tzibur anymore. V'kiblu acher b'mekaymai. So he steps down, so to speak, and the Tzibur accepts somebody else to take the position. Ein sarich rishus. This old Shlach Tzibur, the Shlach Tzibur Emeritus, does not need rishus to daven for the Amid. If he wants to daven for the Amid again, he doesn't need new rishus from the Tzibur. Because what happened over here was the, the Tzibur appointed this fellow to be the Shleach Tzibur. So he clearly had Rishus from the Tzibur to represent them and to be the Shleach Tzibur. He stepped down of his own volition. 
As far as Dezibo was concerned, he could have continued. He stepped down of his own volition. So now, if he wants to go back to the Ahmed, he doesn't need new Rishus from the Tzibur because his old Rishus from the Tzibur is Bim Kaibai Medes. The only thing he's going to need is he's going to need Rishus from the new Shliach Tzibur, says the Chavetz Chaim. He, he, the Rishus from the Tzibur he doesn't need Kevin Shebiyadu Oidli Shliach Tzibur because as far as the Tzibur is concerned, he has Rishus. Vedafka Meha Kohol ain't Sarek Rishus. However, it's only from the Tzibur that he doesn't need new Rishus. But from the new Shliach Tzibur who replaced him, Tzarech Litol Rishus, he needs Rishus from the new Shliach Tzibur to go stand in his place. So says the Tzibur's Yad Elio. However, he refers us to what he writes in the Bir Alacha, the Ramaska Valayamtin on Pei Beis Amin Beis, where he says that what would flow out of that Bir Alacha is that indeed the Shliat Tzibur does need new Rishus from the Tzibur, Ayin Shum. Okay, Ois Kat Mem the Mechaber said that when the, if the Mechaber, you to daven for the Amid, you should be Mesarev. But if the one who's asking you to go up is an Adam Gadol, like the Rav, then the Mechaber said, Ein Mesarven Klal. Says the Mishnah Rav, Kat Mem Hei, the ain misarvin la gadol, because the rule is that we are not misarev to a gadol. When a gadol comes and offers you a position of honor, then you don't protest. The Kasra Taisus Seif Perik Zayin de Psachim. We have a Taisus in the end of the seventh Perik of Psachim, who says the bedvar gasus usarara that when it comes to a position that shows a certain amount of gasus, gasus is like a lotion of gasus haruach, like gaiva it shows that you're really an important person, usrara, and importance and authority, in that case, you could be Masarev even to a Gadol. That Gemara in Psachim and that Taisus in Psachim happen to be very interesting. Let me see if I could um, pull it up very quickly over here. Uh, bear with me for one second. Mm-hmm. This was in Psachim, and it's Memzai, Memvav, Abu Beis, I believe. Memvav, 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 Abu Beis. Uh, maybe it's not Memvav, Abu Beis. Maybe it's Memvav, Abu Aleph. Maybe it's not Memvav, Abu Aleph. Where is it? No. Oh, Pay, 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 Pay. What did he say? He said Payvav. My, my apologies. <laughs> yeah, so there's a Gemara over here. Oh, come on. Why am I getting the wrong? No. Uh, preparation is a wonderful thing. Okay, here it is. So the Gemara says like this. Rav Huna Breid Rav Nassim. Rav Huna Breid Rav Nassim Ikla Lebe Rav Nachman by Yitzchak. Rav Huna, the son of Rav Nassim, went to the home of Rav Nachman by Yitzchak. Amrule. Rav Nachman by Yitzchak said to Rav Huna Bar Nassim, Ma Shma Shmach, what's your name? Amaluhu, he said back to him, Rav Huna. My name is Rav Huna. Amru, they said to him, Nesav Mar Apuria. Sit down on a couch. In other words, that was back in the day when most of the people who were sitting by a Suda, they sat on the ground. To have a couch to recline on, that was a Hashivas. So they were Mechabid Rav Huna, and they said, Nesav Mar Apuria. Sit down on the couch. Yosef, he sat down. Yavulei Kasa. They gave him a, a, a cup of wine. They gave him a hush of a cup of wine. Kible Bechad Zimna. He accepted it right away upon the first offer. As soon as they offered him the cup of wine, he took it. Veshasya betray Zimne. And he drank it in two swallows. Veloy Ahader. 
Veloy Ahadar Ape, and he didn't turn his face away while he was drinking it. Then they started peppering Rafuna with questions. Amrule, they said to him, <clears throat> My Taima Karisalach Ravhuna. When they ask you what your name is, why was your response Rav Huna? That means, I mean, if he said Rav Huna, so he's giving himself an honorific. So they asked him, you know, we ask you what your name is. Why don't you say Huna? Why do you say right away Rav Huna? And his answer was, Amaluhu, Bal Hashem Ani. Now, literally, what that's mean, that means is, that's what I'm called. That's what they call me, Bal Hashem Ani. I am the owner of that name. That's what they call me. Rashi says, what does that mean, Bal Hashem Ana? Mikatnusi Kach Kairuli, Rav Huna. They've been calling me Rav Huna since I'm young, since I'm a child. They call me Rav Huna. So you want to know what my name is? My name is Rav Huna. This is my Klaikis, other Rishayim, the uh, 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 Rabbeinu Hananel says, you know why I said Rav Huna? Because Bal Hashem Ani. Because I'm entitled to be called Rav Huna because I have Smicha. Back then, Smicha was a real thing, a real Smicha. So he says, <laughs> I'm, 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 you want to know why he said Rav Huna? Because Bal Hashem Ani. My time of Ki Amrulach Nesiv Apuria Yasafta. Why is it that right away where they offered you to sit down on the couch, why did you why did you offer it? Why did you accept right away? Lachaira, you should have you should have declined. Why should you have declined? So Rashi says, My time of Kiamrulach Save Apuria Asavis. Why did you sit down on the couch right away? Veloya Shafta al Gabi Karka, you didn't sit on the ground. Veloya al Gabi Safsal, or maybe on a normal bench. Ulahachi Bole. And this, the reason they asked him this question is, It wasn't normal for everybody to just sit down in such an honored way to sit down on a couch. So why weren't you misarev? Why, why is it that you didn't, you know, protest at first? So he answers, um, he answered back, because there's a rule. Kol she a lot of people are familiar with this quote from Chazal, which literally means whatever the your host tells you, that's what you do. Unless he says leave. If he says leave, you don't listen. But anything else that he tells you to do, that's what you do. This is a brysa from Derech Eretz Rabbah. And in the brysa in Derech Eretz Rabbah, you have different mefarshim. There's a famous Bach. The Bach says that what the brysa is telling you is if you're in somebody's house and the Balabayas asks you to do something, then it would be proper for you to do it. About you're, you're sitting, you're a guest in, in the house of a host. If the host asks you to do something, do it. Unless he says, say, unless he says, go out. What does that mean, go out? If he tells you to go out and do shopping for him, that you're not mechoyev to do. Now he's already asking you to leave the house. You know, while I'm in your house, I do what you ask me to do. But I'm not mechoyev to do what you ask me to do outside of the house. I believe that's what the, the box says. Then they asked him, "My time of kiyavilach kasa kabalta bechad zimna kivilas kabelis." Why did you take it right away when they offered you the the kais? You weren't misariv at all. You you went ahead and you took it right away the first time. Amalahu, so Rav Huna said back, "Misarivin lekatan." You protest when a katan. When a lesser person is offering you a kibud, the ain misarvin le but you don't protest when a godl is offering you a kibud. So here's where we have the klal, ain misarvin le godl. Rav Huna was talking to Rav Nachman by Yitzchak. Rav Nachman by Yitzchak, he was in his house. So the kibud that he was being offered, he was being offered by Rav Nachman by Yitzchak. And he can't be misarvin to Rav Nachman by Yitzchak. Now, what's interesting over here is, Taisvis asks the Kasha. Taisvis says, you know, they asked Rav Huna two things here. They asked him, how come when they offered you to sit down, you went ahead and you sat down? And on that he said, Kol balabayas asay, um, But when they asked him about the wine, he didn't give that answer. When they asked him about the wine, he said, Ein misarvin legadol. Why didn't he say Ein misarvin legadol on both? When they asked him how come he, he accepted to sit down on the couch right away, he should have said, Why did he need two different answers? 
The couch was because the wine, that was because so it's Taisus' kasha. And Taisus says like this, Am I the Yosef Apurya? On the fact that he sat down on the couch and he didn't protest, Loi Shayek Lameymar Mishum De'ain Misarvin. Rav Huna could not answer that the reason he accepted the honor of sitting on the couch was because Ain Misarvin Legodo. You know why? Mishum De'ain Misarvin De Yeshivas Purya Dvar Gasus Visraru. That is a davar of Gasus and Sarara. That's a major keyboard because it shows that you're a person of authority. You're a person like you have a certain amount of Gasus, a certain amount of haughtiness when everybody else is sitting on the ground and you're sitting on a couch. And Ein Misarvin Legadal does not apply to that kind of a keyboard. Ein Misarvin Legadal applies to lesser keyboardim. But kibudim that entail gasus and srara, ain misarv legadol doesn't apply to. So it's this gemara and psachim over here, and this taisvus where we have the source for both the fact that ain misarv legadol doesn't apply to a davar of gasus and srara, and for the rule of ain misarv legadol at all. Okay. Now we go to sif yud ches. Four lines down in the Mechaber. No, no, I'm sorry. Sif Yud Zayin. Three lines down in the Mechaber. Says the Mechaber Sif Yud Zayin. Im tosh liach tzibur. If there's a shliach tzibur, a chazan who's davening for the Yomid. Now it's important to remember how spoiled we are. You know, we have printed tzidurim. Everybody expects to go to shul and have a sitter. And if somehow you go to shul and you don't have a sitter, well, you take out your smartphone and you turn on the sitter app. But everybody expects to have a sitter, to have a chumash, to have a printed Gemara when they want to learn Daf Yomi, but we are very, 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 very spoiled, Rabbi Isai. Back in the day, there weren't necessarily Sidurim for everybody. Maybe there were no Sidurim at all. So sometimes you had to dive in Balpeh. So says the Mechaberim, Tosh Lech Tzibur, if the Shlech Tzibur made a mistake in his davening, Utsvichin Lahamid Acher Tachtov, he can't continue his davening. He's, he's not getting it right. So they need to appoint a different Shlech Tzibur to take his place. In that case, when there's an emergency and they need to appoint the new Baltfila and the Gaba is running around and he's saying, no, 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 maybe you'll go take over, that's not a time to be Misarev. You don't protest then out of Anova. Now there's a crisis. They ask you to go up, you got to go right up. Says the Bir Allah of Div Ramaska Lo Yasarev, Shalala Hafsik Batfila, because we can't create unnecessary Hafsakas in the Davening. Now we go to Sif Yud Ches, four lines down. Says the Mechaber. Ha'aymer eini yoyre lifnei ateva. I don't want to go daven for the Amud. Mipnei shebegodai tzvuin, because I'm wearing colored garments. Oy mipnei sheberagli sandal, or because I'm wearing shoes. Lo yeyreid ba'oyset filaklal. This person cannot go up to the Amud, and let's say he did this by Shachris, that's it. No more for him. Today, we're not offering him any kibudim. He can't daven for the Amit at all. Why? Because this was something that heretics, apikursin, won makpid on such things. And I believe that the, the source of this really, this is a Gemara Megillah of Dalin and Bez, I think this was a reference to the early Christians that they had this um, hakpada. They had this, um, what's the right word for in English? They had this concept um, that in order to go, you know, lead services or in order to do something, you know, in the temple, right? You couldn't do it if you were wearing, you can't pray, you can't lead prayers if you're wearing colored garments. You have to be wearing white. You can't go ahead and do this if you're wearing shoes, you have to be barefoot. But these were not Yiddish concepts. These were heretical concepts. So if you catch somebody in shul and you're asking him to daven for the Amun and he goes and he says, I can't daven for the Amun because I'm wearing colored clothing or because I'm wearing shoes, then it sounds like you're dealing with, he has exposed himself. It sounds like you're dealing with somebody who has heretical ideas and therefore we cannot allow him to daven for the Amun. Now why is it that we only don't let him daven for the Amun but 
by that tefillah. So that the Mishnah is going to tell us because we don't know for sure that this fellow is a heretic. We only know from something that he said now, it sounds like he's a heretic. So on that suffolk, it's enough to shut him out for the tefillah now. If he comes back another time, another day, then we could assume that even if it was some idea of heresy that he had in his head, Mestami, he got straightened out, and Mestami, he did tshuva. So again, Why? And we must be concerned. Maybe he has been struck with some kind of thoughts of apikursus. Says Drama And even if he gives an excuse for why he said it. In other words, he'll say, Yeah, I said it because I, I really feel the shape Shamayim that it's not proper to down for the Ahmed when you're wearing colored clothing, you know. Loi Mahani, his excuse doesn't work. We do not accept his excuse. Says the Mishnah, I's cotton, yud, I's cotton memvav. Lo yeret, he cannot dam for the Amid. Vafilu imu mischaret achakach. Even if you go and you ask him to dam for the Amid. And he says, oh, I, I, I can't because I'm wearing colored clothing. Then they need a Baal Musaf. And he says, I'm willing to dam in Musaf. He's like, nope, you're a puzzle for today. You can't dam for the Amid. Why? Because I said I won't go to the Yomba with colored clothing? I, I had charot on that. I, yeah, I remembered it was the wrong thing to say. You know, you don't listen to him. This is only the gay. Since we didn't mamish hear him say anything heretical, it's just he said something that makes it look like he's a heretic. For that, you only have to worry for that tefillah. If he came back with an excuse, for instance, he'll come back and he'll say, He'll say, listen, I really meant it. I really meant that it's much more about Kavadik to Shemayim if I dive with a white shirt. I skipped the line. Uh, because no, because okay. Since the Tzibor asked him to daven while he was wearing the colored clothing or while he was wearing shoes, he shouldn't have protested based on that. Kevin de Medina Mutter, since Al Pialachi, it's okay. So, what did the Mishnah Burr just say? The Mishnah Burr just said like this. The Mechaber says, if the fellow comes and protests for these reasons, then it looks like he might be an Apikairis, and therefore we keep him away from the Ahmed for that tefillah. The Ramah said that this is true even if he has an Amasla. Even if he comes along and he says, look, 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 I, I really meant it L'Shem Shamayim. We still don't take him. Why? Because even if he's right, even if he's telling the truth, that he really meant it L'Shem Shamayim, his L'Shem Shamayim was misplaced. Don't tell me that you're being L'shem Shemayim. There's no halacha that says that you can't daven for the Amid if, you, if you're wearing colored clothing. And if the tzibur came, if the Gavai came and asked you to daven for the Amid, don't be as afruma l'chvayt Shemayim that you're going to say, I can't daven for the Amid because I'm not wearing white. That's misplaced from kite. And, and therefore, even though you have an excuse that maybe it's not happy courses, we don't take you for the Amid. Okay. Weiter in the Mishnah over here is cut memches. Kasav a prichadash to prichadash writes dafka im achakach amar ha amaslo. This that the Rama says that we don't pay attention to his excuse is only when he came back with the excuse later. Avalim miyad kisha amar sheini over b'tzvuim amar tekifatam shein derech kavod l'Hashem kiim belavanim yeraid ayin sham. The prichadash says is when is it true what the Rama says that you don't listen to an amaslo? That's if the Gabbai went to him, asked him to daven for the Amid. He said, no, 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 I'm wearing colored clothing. I'm not going to daven for the Amid. Okay. The Gabbai walks away. A half hour later, the guy says, by the way, I meant that L'Shem Shemayim. Then we don't listen to his Amasla. But if he used his Amasla immediately, if they came in the instant, would you daven for the Amid? And he said, no, I'm wearing colored clothing. And, and it's not it's not covered for shame. It's not quite Shemayim that I should daven for the Amid while I'm wearing colored clothing. So 
In this case, he's saying the Amasla from the get-go. If he says the Amasla from the get-go, then the Prichadr says we could accept it. Okay. Ice cotton your test. Sif your test. In the Mechaber. Four, uh, four lines on the bottom. Last word on the line. Yesh moinim ger mili yosh There are those who prevent a ger. They refuse to allow a ger, a convert, to be a shleach tzibur. V'nidchu divrehem. But their words are cast aside. In other words, there is such a shita. There is such a shita that a ger shouldn't daven for the Amid. But the Mechaber says we don't. Listen to that cheetah, Venidchu Devreim. Okay, let's take a look at what's at play over here. Says the Mishnah Brewer. Aiskan Memtes, Mili Yishliat Sibur. There are those that refrain from appointing a ger from being a Shliat Sibur. Explains the Mishnah Brewer, why would this be? What would we base it on? Lefi Shela Yucha Loimar, Seinu. There's many places in Davini where we say Elokeinu Velokeave Seinu. And a ger, the thinking goes, cannot say Elokeinu Velokeaveisenu. What do you mean, the God of my forefathers? This fellow was a convert. His forefathers were not Jewish. So what's he saying, Elokeinu Velokeaveisenu? And since he can't say Elokeaveisenu, he can't daven for the Amid. That's this shita. Aval, however, kishu mispal beinoy lebein atzmai. So very nice. You're not going to take him as a shleat zibur. But what's he supposed to do when he's davening his own davening? How does he say? How does this help? How does he say Elikeinu Velokavi Seinu? Then you're going to tell me he can't daven. So the Mishnah Berurah explains. Avol kishu mispal be noy lebein atzmai when he's davening for himself. Yomar Elikeavo is Yisrael when he's davening his own personal davening, so he could change the nusach and he could say Elikeavo is Yisrael, the the God of the fathers of the Yidden, but he can't say that when he's davening for the Amid. Because when he's davening for the Omni, he's davening on behalf of the Tzibur. So how, he's not going to change the Nusach and say, Yisrael, but he also can't say, Seinu. So therefore, he shouldn't daven for the Omni. Ice cut nun, but the Mechaber said, Vinidchu divrayim. Even though there is such a shita that a ger shouldn't daven for the Omni, but for this reason, he says, Vinidchu divrayim, their words are cast aside. Why? What? How do? How indeed do you answer this problem? How does he say Elikeinu v'Elikavi Seinu? Explains the Chavetz Chaim. Do Yachal Aimer Gam Kein Elikavi Seinu? Because a ger could say Elikavi Seinu, the God of our fathers. Why? Very interesting reason. Davra Mikra Av Hamayin Goyim, because we find in the pasuk in Chumash that Avram Avinu was called Av Hamayin Goyim, the father of many nations. So Avram, Yitzchak, and Yaakov, they're not only the Avais of Klal Yisrael. Avram Avinu was Av Hamoin Goyim. Avram Avinu is referred to in the Pasuk as being the father of many nations. So the Ger is also part of Avram Avinu's nations. Avram Avinu is a father of the Ger as well. Kiddik Siv, like it says in the Pasuk, Av Hamoin Goyim, Nesaticha. Now, why is this? Why is this taka true? Why is Avram Avinu called Av Hamoin Goyim? In what way is Avram Avinu the father of this ger? Because the Rambam says that Avram Avinu taught all the nations about Emunas Hashem. And therefore anybody who comes Takas Kanfei Ashkina is considered to be a Talmud of Avram Avinu's and a Talmud is like a son. So they're all B'nai Avram Yitzchak Yaakov. Now there's a, a very nice, I'll read to you, this Rambam as a, as a whole. Let me see if I can find it quickly over here. Yeah. This is the word, these are, are the words of the Rambam in the Tshuva. It comes from a Tshuva Sarambam. Leger sheshalai im yoimar b'tfila elikei aviseinu. A ger wrote to the Rambam and asked him, can he say elikei aviseinu? Says the Rambam, V'ikar ha-davar she'avram avinu hu shalimeid kala olam. 
Avram Avinu taught the entire world. Vihiskilam, and he wisened them up. Vahidiyem dasa emes, and he taught them the true religion, the true das. Vihudai shalakadish barachu, and he taught to the entire world, to all the nations, the idea of the yichud of the Rabbeinu Shalalem, that the Rabbeinu Shalalem is the sole power, the sole deity in the world. Ubat Bavid Zara, and he kicked against Bavid Zara. Vehefer and he 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 was mefer, the Avid of Bavid Zara. He 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 threw away Bavid Zara. Vehichnis Rabim Tachas Kanfei Ashchina, and he bought brought many individuals Tachas Kanfei Ashchina. Velim Dem, and he taught them the Hiram, the Tziva Banav Bnei Beisai. And he commanded his children and the bnei, his bnei bias, the people of his household, Acharav, lishmar derech Hashem, to keep the ways of Hashem. Kamaisha kasev b'tayra. This is as we find in the pasuk in the Torah that says, where the Rebbeinu Shalom says, "Ki yedativ, I love Avram Avinu. Why? Lamana she yitzave as banav as beisay Acharav v'shamru derech Hashem." So the Rebbeinu Shalom attests to the fact, and he says that I love Avram Avinu. Why? Because Avram Avinu is going to instruct his children, his, his children Zarai Achrav and his Bnei Bayis, the people that are attached to his household, he's going to teach them about Amuna in Hashem Yisbarach. Lefikach, therefore, kol misha yiskayar at saif kol based on this, anyone who becomes a ger until the end of all generations, the cholam yakit shmoi shal HaKadosh Baruch Hu k'moshu kasav b'tairah, and anybody who is miyached the name of Hashem, as it's written in the Torah, Talmidei shall Avram Avinu aleim Hashalom, all of Hashalom. They are Talmidim of Avram Avinu all of Hashalom, ubnei beisai heim kulam, and they are all considered bnei bias of Avram Avinu. For who hechserai sam lemutav, and it is Avram Avinu that brought them around to go become gerim. The same way that we know we know about all the gerim that Avram Avinu made um, in his own generation, but not only that, all the gerim for all future dairis are considered talmidim of Avram Avinu. Since Avram Avinu is the beginning of the chain of Klal Yisrael, all of the Gerim that come in the future, they're all considered to be to be a bias of Avram Avinu. Nimtza Avram Avinu al Shalom who av luzare akshirim aholchi bedracha vav lutamida v'chal ger sheyizgayim. So basically what the Rambam, and there's more, the Rambam goes a lot longer, I'm not going to read the whole thing. Basically what the Rambam is saying is, yes, Avram Avinu is the Av of all Gerim, because Avram Avinu is the one who went out of his way to teach Emunah, Betachad, and Yerushamayim to everyone, not only to his children, he taught everyone. And therefore this whole concept of people that are Chayzer B'Tshuva, and, and and people that become gerim, people who are born not Jewish and decide to convert, it all goes back to Avram Avinu, and Avram Avinu is considered their father as well, and therefore the ger could say, Elikeinu v'lekav Isenu. Okay, continuing in the Mishnah, is cotton nun, shleach tzibor mamzer, if you have a mamzer, who wants to serve as a shleach tzibor, this halach is going to be, de- be dependent on the machlokes, on what you hold, whether or not a mamzer is allowed to write tefillin. If a mamzer is allowed to write tefillin, that means that we're saying that a mamzer has the ability to, to help somebody else be mekai in mitzvahs, to be mitzi other people in mitzvahs. And that's what a shnatzibur has to do. A shleitzibur has to be mitzi other people in their davening. 
So the Mishnah Ruiz actually a Tiba Mamzer talked about Machlaikis and Mamzer Kasher Lichtai Tfilin. We saw earlier a Machlaikis and Lichtai Tfilin whether or not a Mamzer is allowed to write Tfilin. This halacha will be dependent on that halacha. Kain Kasav Bishyure Knesses Hagdailo. Well, if he's Allah, I'm going to have Robin Simon Lamatesha Kasav Bishemadaki Moshe, the Motor Lichtai Tfilin, Motor Liash Lechtai Tfilin. Omnam Besever Berke Yasub Yardarish Pay Aleph, Masik the Shiv Siach Siva Loya, or Tfilin Shakasav Kisherim. Okay, I'm going to have to cut the share a little bit short for something that just came up. So I'm going to stop over here, and Amir Hashem, next time I will continue with the next Mishnah with Mishnah Ice Cut Nun Aleph. Okay? Thank you for joining me for Libra Natar. The source of Libra Natar should be Megan against Kla Yisrael. The version of Shesen Yeshuas, Yeshuas, Rafus, Shaduchim, and Panasa to all those in need. And we should be Zaycha to see the BS called Sedek, Bimheri, Amen, Amen. Be well.